Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 10.2. We're going to find the term solution again, give examples of what solutions look like, show various solutions, we're going to explain the difference between saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated, and explain how solutions are formed, and then we're going to do some separation methods too, so let's hop to it. Got to keep them separated. Okay, come on, change, change, change. Water is rarely pure, but it is often a solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture. That means the samples are the same. They can be a solid in a solid, a solid in a liquid, a liquid in a liquid, or a gas in a liquid. So a lot of different things can happen. Solid in a solid is called an alloy, by the way. And then these other ones are just called solutions. There's two parts. The solute is the smaller part, and the solvent is the biggest part. The solute is dissolved. You'll see this a lot too. And the solvent does the dissolving. And then sometimes you can't tell what it is if you have two liquids. Miscible would mean there are two liquids that dissolve in each other. So solid and solid is an alloy, and alloys like steel and bronze and stuff like that make a big difference. Types of solutions. All solutions, by the way, are homogeneous mixtures. A solid and a solid is an alloy like bronze or steel. A solid and a liquid, duh, salt water, we did that today. A liquid and a liquid is called miscible, like alcohol and water is fairly common. A gas and a liquid, a carbonated beverage, gas and a gas, oxygen and nitrogen, as long as it's a homogeneous mixture, then you get it. So what dissolves? Polar dissolves in polar. Nonpolar dissolves in nonpolar. Polar does not dissolve in nonpolar, and so on and so forth. Why did the white bear dissolve in water? It was polar. <laughs> so polar dissolves in polar. So if I'm killing the Wicked Witch of the West, and I'm making her dissolve by throwing a bucket of water on it, the Wicked Witch of the West is polar. Dissolving. Electrostatic attraction. This means positives love negatives. A positive loves it some negative. If there's no charge, there's that, not, not that much traction. So the London dispersion forces are the only thing that play into a role. So positive loves negative. So why does this dissolve? This is positively charged, and water has a bunch of little negatives attached to it. Why does this blue one? The blue one's negative. Well, it's got a bunch of little positives on it that go with it. So why do nonpolar things dissolve in nonpolars? It makes sense. Positives like negatives and negatives like positives. So polars have attractive things. Nonpolars don't have anything. No repulsion, so they just mix together. There's a little bit of attraction due to London force, and I want to say a little, 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 little bit. So if a dry cleaning solvent dissolves nonpolar oil, spill oil on my shirt, the solvent is nonpolar oil, nonpolar. If butanol dissolves in polar water, butanol is polar. So like dissolves like is what that means. Polar dissolves polar. How do solutions form? Well, if I start off with a couple of bricks of salt and I dump it into some water, what happens first is the salt has to break. Solute, solute, bonds break. Or I guess I said salt, let's do sugar. Sugar, sugar breaks. Solvent, solvent breaks. Remember, water has a positive and a negative end as well. So you have to separate those bonds as well. It's weaker than the one above, but that's it. Solute, solvent, bonds form. This releases energy and makes the solution warm and happy. Okay? And most of them release energy. Not all of them, but most of them do. Some ionics don't dissolve. Why not? Okay, so an ionic compound, remember, is a big honking positive attached to a big honking negative. And what water does is there's a bunch of little water molecules and their chins are negative, and they try and pull away that positive. And they say, come with us. We'll make you happy. So how many dates does it take for you to dump your King of Hearts date? Well, if you decide that you know you've got your date, but then you have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, you have the septuplets ask you and say, "No, go to King of Hearts with us." What happens is septuplets. I'll never get a chance to do that again. And if you're a jerk, you break up with your girlfriend to go on a date with septuplets. Okay, so the small attraction to a bunch of them could be greater than the attraction of your true love. Oh. So sweet. So some ionics don't dissolve. Why? The bond is too strong, right? Some people 
no matter what, if septuplets ask me to go out on a date, I'm married, I'm happily married, I would not break up with my wife to go on a date with septuplets. Okay? The bond is too strong. Oh, isn't that so sweet? Oh. But if it's, oh, I don't know, Jaquan, Jaquan doesn't date a girl for more than 30 seconds, so she he drops her and goes after those septuplets. That dog. Separating mixtures. Remember, solutions are mixtures, so you can separate them. Distillation is by boiling point. So if I have an impure liquid, they have two different boiling points, like water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and like acetone boils at 78 degrees Celsius. So if I heat this up to 78 degrees, what happens is the acetone goes out and the water stays. And then you cool it down, cold water, and out drops the acetone. So you can separate things by boiling point. Chromatography, yeah, I expect you to draw these pictures. Chromatography, you've got a solvent in here, and you've got my mixture right here. And what happens is the paper pulls up the solvent. So it starts creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And then as it starts creeping up, the different parts of it will separate into different layers. So this would be component one, component two, component three parts of that mixture. And the ones that are most attracted to the solvent, this is most attracted. And the smallest, because small particles can travel the best. And this one is the least attractive to the solvent and or the biggest. Filtration particle size. So if I have a big filter and my filter holes are this big, things that are this big get through. Things that are that big do not. And that's it. Magnetism. And you hold a magnet. Some things go to it. Some things don't. How do you separate a mixture of salt, sand, iron, and poppy seeds? So what you do is you got a bunch of this junk. There's a bunch of junk. Um, the first thing I would do is the iron. How do I separate the iron? Well, I throw in a magnet. And all of the metal stuff jumps onto it. Cha-ching. Then if I have salt, sand, and poppy seeds, the next thing I do is I dump in water. So once I dump in the water, there are these things floating on top. Guess what floats on top? Oh, they're the poppy seeds. That would separate by density. Oh, no, my pen doesn't work. Let's see if I can make it come back. That would be separated by density. So now I have sand on the bottom, right? And I have salt water. So then what I do is I dump it through a filter. There's my funnel. With my filter paper. And it catches the sand here. And I get salt water down here. Oh, no, my pen doesn't work. Uh-oh. Let's hope it comes back. And I get sand. Uh, oh, no, I don't get sand in there. I get salt water down here. Oh, no, my pen doesn't work. I get salt water down here. And then, just like we did in the lab today, you would boil off the salt water to get it back. Okay? That's the lab we're going to do. Review! you got to keep them separated. Oh, where's my music? A solution is homogeneous mixture of many different states of matter. Solid is a small part. Solvent is a big part. Solution is all parts. Super saturation, we did not do that in this one. I apologize. Polar dissolves in polar, and nonpolar dissolves in nonpolar, and use soap. That was for you, Nick. Toodles.